It's the KSO Show, a special edition, the one that I think uh, everyone's been waiting for with the experts, the football experts at KSO, the football minds um, and basketball minds, but we're talking football after a K-State win. K-State win 24-7 to over Stanford in Jerry World, um, you know, week one, a game K-State needed to win to get off on uh, the right foot for the season a lot of hype going into the season and they they showed out so let's bring in the guys without further ado we have uh chris nelson and jimmy goheen also known as ksu underscore fan on twitter and on our message board go follow both of them on twitter go follow both of them on the message board too you know the, the they're just very smart guys so everything they put out there is usually going to be pretty smart unless Nelly spewing spewing things while we're down or while K State is <laughs> is down many points. But even then, it's usually out of out of love. And still, he's so such a smart mind that it's usually out of a lot of uh, education behind the game as well. So, thank you guys for joining me, and let's just talk about first. How how was you were there, Nelly? So let's go to you. What was the atmosphere like for you? What did you think of the game? Um, you know, atmosphere in Arlington and just that type of feel. I, I thought it was great. I know the listed attendance was what twenty eight thousand, but to me, it felt like more than that. It felt louder than that. The excitement level was great, and you know, I, me personally, I woke up Friday morning. It wasn't even game day yet, and I told the guys, "Well, it's like." This is the first time I am legitimately have that feel of a football week in, in quite a while, that excitement and that energy. So certainly that it was good to have that back. And then, Jimmy, so you didn't get to go to the game this week, but obviously you get to be with your family. you got high school football to focus on, of course. Um, and But you still obviously got to watch the game from the comforts of your home. So a different angle than people that were down in Arlington. So tell me what your experience was like with that, getting to see the first K-State game in a long time, I'm sure was nice on TV and getting to see K-State get a win was fun as well. Yeah, it, it was it was a lot of fun watching it. And uh, <clears throat> had my, both my father-in-law and my father uh, at my house to watch the game. Um, it's my son's birthday this weekend, so we watched the game first. Happy birthday. Yeah. What's his name? So, Trey. Happy birthday to Trey. How about that? Trey Goheen. So we, <clears throat> we watched the game and it was, it was fun having a game that maybe third quarter, there was a few sort of tense moments, but for the most part, in case they got the lead, got up two scores mm -hmm. and, and you felt pretty comfortable the whole game and against a, a quality opponent out of the pack, uh, pack 12 in Stanford. It's nice to have kind of a game you control the whole game and really probably wasn't as close as the 24 to 7 score that showed up at the end so that was it was a good good way to start it's kind of a, a fun weekend I'm sure it would have been great to be in Texas because then you have the rest of the day to just hang out and have fun with Kansas State fans which which we had we went to tap house for my son's dinner um, uh, birthday dinner so that was fun for us yeah. but it's it's just nice when you have that 11 a.m game to win because then you just pretty much enjoy the rest of the weekend and, and just watch Absolutely. football and that's what it was. Texas Live was lit. Uh, me and Nelly knew that firsthand. It was a good time. Nelly was out there. Probably that, Nelly. Nelly it goes harder than probably anyone because he's <laughs> he's he's having fun during the game, and then after the game, we don't even get out there till five. Nelly's still out there having a good time. Um, my dad was in town. He had a good time. <laughs> Unless I saw him out at live. It didn't take long for him to say he has to call it a night, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Because a lot of a lot of you know liquid courage was was being consumed. But in a win, it's always you know makes it that much more fun, that much more sweet. So let's just get into the game. You know, uh, just a really really fun start to the game. Um, let's talk it through and and kind of go drive by drive and and really lay out what we think happened in this game and then I'll let you guys dive even deeper into any other details you want of course fan has stats galore that I'm sure he'll only touch on a few here and there but on the site and on uh you know just yeah on KSO you can find all of his great work there um, when it comes to in-depth statistical information so let's just 
the first drive. I mean, the, the defense was just unreal for K-State. There's no doubt about that. And they showed out right away, um, forcing Stanford to punt. So, Jimmy, let's start with you and take me through what you think you saw from the defense on that first drive and, and how did that get your spirits going to start this game off? Well, the, the, the key was we, you know, we, there was rumors about possible three man front and, and how they were going to do that, what the look was going to be. And I, I had kind of heard that I thought it was going to be more of a four man front. And I think in, in ways it was, but they did come out playing a three man front quite a bit, at least three down and using kind of a, you know, people call them um, different things. The outside backer that can kind of be on the line of scrimmage, can play back, you can do a lot of things, kind of more like Oklahoma State uses it, or Oklahoma, not Oklahoma yeah. State. And <clears throat> I think we saw that. We saw a lot of different guys, just guys coming in and out and uh, setting the tone early by stopping the run and, and really continuing that throughout the whole game, taking the run away from Stanford which, you know, I think is something this staff likes to do uh, in climate's philosophy is take away the run, make them beat you through the air. And we really did that. And, you know, Stanford's young quarterback started, struggled from the start, and that kind of carried over to the game. But a lot of that, I think, was K-State's defense. Seven to ten early. Nelly, talk about that rotation. That, like Fan just said, that jumped off the page instantly to everyone, especially up at, us up in the press box trying to keep up. Um, it – what, what did you think of that, and and how beneficial was that to this defense's success? <laughs> you know, there were there were times where I was physically counting the players on the field to make sure we didn't have 12 on the field because I, <laughs> I knew at some point we were going to run five new guys out there and only four were gonna, going to run off. But they, they kept it all straight, and that's a credit to both the staff and the coaches to be able to, to um, sub like that and not have any issues with it, both from a um, – Penalty having too many guys on the field and from just getting it done timely. But, yeah, it's certainly no doubt that helps stay fresh um, in the fourth quarter. And even the guys who didn't play a ton, it seemed like everybody who did play contributed. You know, you mm -hmm. think it's Trent Spencer Trussell didn't have a ton of snaps, but he had really one meaningful snap when he um, dropped back in coverage and caused a high throw that led to the rest of the East interception. Um, you know, guys like that uh, – uh, Stubbefield had the great play, cutting yeah. underneath the slot on the on the seam route. You know, so it seemed like everyone who played find a, found a way to contribute. So, K State gets them to punt on that first drive, and the next drive was a Kansas State interception, which may have taken the sails out of some fans at first. You know, um, thinking that K State had a nice little drive going. Deuce Vaughn busted out a you know 17 yard run to start things off on the first and ten from the. K-State five, and they get all the way down to the Stanford side of the field. Um, and then, you know, Skyler apparently checks into a, a, a play to, to Brooks on a post, you know, <laughs> deep, deep fade basically is what it was, and threw a, and an incredible interception. But tell me, uh, Nelly, did you think that was a mistake on Thompson's part to make that play? Obviously, it was a mistake but it also didn't rattle him. So what did you think about that little, that drive and that interception? Well, the interception first, my, my beef with it, with it was checking to that play and yep. going to Brooks in that situation. Um, Philip Brooks is a good player, has a lot of strengths, but I would say going up um, and beating a guy on a deep ball and a fade ball probably isn't one of his strengths. <laughs> and, you know, earlier in the drive, we did use him to his strength. We, we went to an empty backfield, um, but with 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end. So Vaughn and Emad or Bebe were, were lined up wide. So they stayed in their base defense, which meant Brooks was lined up in the slot against the linebacker, which made it a very easy throw on a nut route that he turned into a 24-yard gain. So certainly that play was an example of using guys to their talents and using formations to create favorable matchups, where the interception was not an example of yeah. that. You know, I – and. You and feel free to disagree with me. Obviously, it was a mistake. I honestly didn't hate it, and I didn't hate Skyler's. I mean, obviously, because it was a, a win still. If it was a loss, sure, huge, huge mistake. But in a win and first, you know, one of the first, the first drive of the game, I don't mind taking a shot. I do agree, Nelly, you're spot on. Why to Brooks there? Um, that's another thing. It's, it's like that's the last, you know, 
probably the last receiver that you had. You want to be throwing the deep ball like that too. If it was Knowles, then it'd be like, okay, I can understand a guy that can actually go up and make a play against a defender. Um, but, but fan, I want to know, did you think, um, what did you think of that play? And uh, what did you think of Skyler's resilience to come out of that next drive score touchdown? I'm just going to add a little more to the breakdown of the play. Yep. Um, you, had, you had the twins. <clears throat> they basically ran a smash concept because Knowles was outside. They ran a short little five-yard inside dig route. My, <clears throat> honestly, going back and watching it, I put – I think Thompson was trusting Brooks to get open. And Brooks basically ran a corner route. Mm-hmm. And he didn't sell my, – my issue, looking back, watching it a couple times now, is Brooks did not sell his route. When he's at the top of his route about 10 yards in before he runs the corner, he's got to stem inside because he's one-on-one with a, with a nickel. Yep. I think the corner – I mean, the Kelly Blue has played corner. But if he stems inside just a little bit, I think, and, and gets the, the defensive backs to turn his hips inside – then he's going to get back outside and have some separation and have room to work on that side of the end zone. So I really, my blame would be on Brooks not mm-hmm. stemming his route to get some separate. I think if he stems that route, he gets some separation. It's for sure not an interception at worst. Uh, it's broken up by the defensive yeah. back and, and it's incomplete in the second down. So watching it, <clears throat> I really think Brooks has to stem that route better. And if he does, I think it's a much better play. Um, those are the little execution things that, you know, I think a lot of people don't see because you know how <clears throat> you know how to get open on certain parts of the field if you're a wide receiver, if you're a good one anyway. And I didn't think Brooks did his due best to get open on that route where he ran it. I, I agree. I, I don't think Skyler threw a horrible ball. I thought it was an incredible and, and, and I would say – and my other thing is I would say in that situation, Thompson's not watching him run the route. But he's trusting him to run the route right. He knows he's got. He know he just sees the matchup and says, "Hey, I got my dude against this dude. We're going to win this battle most of the time." But he's trusting his teammate to do his job. And I'm, I'm not trying to rail on Brooks because I think he had a good game. But I think he'd even say, "Hey, I could have made that guy move and got more open." In the Absolutely. And it was yeah, an amazing play. I thought at first. Plus, it was a great pick. I mean, yeah, I thought at first it was not even. I thought, oh, great catch, but he's out of bounds. You know, from my yeah. angle and looking at it quickly. But yeah, sure enough, incredible interception. But for not because this Stanford offense can't really get anything going um, at all because K State's defense continues to dominate um, a three and out on the next drive, um, which then, well, shoot, no, yes, three on on the next drive, then which then set up the K State. First touchdown of the game where Skyler did finally, you know, find Brooks at the right time. Um, maybe could have found him sooner. I think that's been talked about a bunch, you know, here and there. Um, and, and we can talk about that here, Nelly. Um, but that drive, you know, set things up. I thought, you know, Thompson was patient in the pocket when he did find Brooks. Took him a little bit long to find him. But when he did, it set up that long gainer that uh, eventually got Skyler truck sticking into the end zone. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, all offseason they talked about needing to create more explosive plays, and obviously you want consistency on offense, and we'll need to be able to sustain drives. But really, it was the explosive plays that that carried K State throughout throughout the game. And yeah, Scott Skyler held in. Um, possibly, if he would have held in a tick longer, he may have had Knowles on a post route um, on the long completion to to Brooks. But hey, it ended up being a, a great play and a long play. So. You know, you can't make any complaints at the end. And the touchdown run was a really – was another play that was really well designed. We brought Linners across the formation um, to, to seal – I believe he's an outside linebacker or defensive end. And it didn't matter if, if Skyler gave it to Deuce or if he kept it. Either one, we're going to walk in, and, and that's what happened. And then, Jimmy, is there anything you want to add to that drive before we just move move on? I know it was a good drive, and I want you to touch on that if you have anything. Well, just just looking at the first two drives, um, even the first couple plays of the next drive, you know, you look at the first the first uh, twelve plays K State ran gained 168 yards. Like Nelly said, you had you had a 17 yard run, you had a 16 yard pass, you had a 22 yard pass. We're going to get to 
the, the jet sweep to Knowles is 30 yards. You have to 56 yard pass. So those chunk plays are huge. Plus, you know, the, the success rate, you know, I look at success rate as how many yards you gain per first and 10 and so on and so forth. But mm-hmm. the success rate was really high. I think only three of those first 12 plays weren't successful by down and distance. So you're really cooking a lot of credit to the staff for scouting Stanford, coming up with a plan and, and having them really on their toes, different formations. You know, we went two back under center a couple times, use a tight end a lot, spread them out, ran inside zone, ran jet sweeps, ran play action, ran drop back passing, just mix things up very, very well to start the game. And I'm assuming um, I'm not sure if Messingham is a script 15, 20 kind of guy, play kind of guy, but it seems like he might be. And for in general, he's really good at that. It's just going to be kind of the rest of the game where maybe we didn't, we weren't as successful that, that comes into play. But just a great start and really a team that should have been up 14 nothing after two drives and not just 7 nothing. One more play that I'll point out is that is such a simple, simple play, but I, I absolutely love the call from Messingham was, I believe this was back on the first drive. It, we ran jet to, to Knowles, and the very next play, we faked jet to Brooks and threw a little swing out pass to Devon. And yeah, it was only a five or six yard gain, but that's a five or six yard gain on first down to set up a manageable second down. And that's almost a guaranteed five or six yards, even if the defense plays it perfectly. So, you know, a great call by, by Mason Hammond. Yeah, he, he certainly stayed ahead of the Stanford defensive coordinator those, those first few drives. And then after that, that first foot, that first touchdown um, for K-State, it was two punts in a row. Um, Stanford had a, a pretty solid nine-play drive going, but then, you know, got stalled uh, before they could cross midfield and had to punt, and then K-State, you know, they got it, and that was uh, another another place where they probably could have got some points. Five, five plays, 30 yards, ended up stalling out with a punt. Um, but then you stop, you stop Stanford again with a three and out. The defense starts rolling once again, you know, as they really, really did in that first half, and it set up uh, Skyler to, to find Deuce – or no, we know it was down. Uh, Inside run, lose 59 yards. Yeah, why am I looking at the wrong thing right now? Yes, that was – okay, that's – I'm sorry, I'm skipping to the third touchdown. Yes. Inside run. Was that a draw to, to deuce on the inside run, or was that just a straight dive? It was – It was. I'd call it inside zone. I mean, yeah. Um, we caught Stanford in a blitz. I think we kind of knew what they'd be doing. They brought two – they brought both linebackers to the short side of the field. We had trips um, to the wide side of the field. And they really – you know, our three – on our left side of our offensive line had three guys to block. And then the safety's 15 yards deep and playing pass. And all, all Vaughn had to do was make him miss, which is why that play was worked so well. It's because both their backers basically blitzed air. Mm-hmm. Wait, and we ran the inside zone right to where they vacated, and really, really another good play call. Something I, I think in post game, either Thompson or Vaughn or both mentioned that they they knew that was going to be there when they ran it the first time, just because of the way Stanford played defense. So really, really well designed. Especially you don't expect inside zone on third and fourteen. No, that was that was great play, and Nelly, I want to know. That first play of that drive, what did you think of, uh, you know, the Skylar Thompson? He missed Garber, but also with that pass interference, what did you think of that? And then just talk about also I want you to touch on what you thought of Deuce's, you know, one long uh, 59-yard run for the, the scamper touchdown. Yeah, live, I was sitting in the opposite corner. So live, I thought it was a questionable call at best. But after I went back and watched the game, I, I think the – the corner definitely did get a tug or two on, on Garber, that which slowed him down. So I, I do think it was a good call. Um, I believe, and it was kind of hard to see on the TV on the rewatch, but I believe uh, Deuce Vaughn was running a wheel route behind um, behind Garber on that play. And and again, I don't make blame Skylar for making that throw. I mean, he had Garber one on one down the field, so so no issue with the read. But I think Vaughn may have kind of come open as well on that play. It, it, he, um, would have held the ball a split second longer. 
But on the long run, uh, obviously everyone did their job, but Josh, Josh Rebus, particularly at left guard, did a great job of sealing off um, the, the defensive tackle. Um, got his butt turned, shoulders turned, basically square to, to Deuce Vaughn and gave him a huge lane to run through. And I thought Rebus played well the entire game. I, I apologize. I don't remember who tweeted it, but there was someone tweeted one of the Malik Knowles jet sweeps runs where Josh Rebus was 10 yards downfield and actually just planted a dude. So I thought he played well for, for most mm -hmm. of the game. Love hearing that. Um, yeah, Josh Rebus is a guy that is needed to step up. And um, if he can continue hard nose play all season long, he could be one of the, if not the best offensive lineman on the team. Um, so let's let's move on to that next drive where K State gets an interception. Um, fan, I, I really thought Stanford's, you know, <laughs> quarterbacks didn't really do the best. Tanner McKee and Jack West. Especially on deep balls, it didn't seem like they could ever really find the the, the mark. Um, intermediate, they were fine, obviously. If you look at their stats, uh, they, they, the completion percentage is pretty good. But when they did try to go deep, they got burnt a few times. And Russ East was really smart on that play, wasn't he? Yeah. I, and I, I credit Klanderman a lot, too, with the schemes. Yeah. I think those guys look confused all day long, both of them. Um, it reminds me of – you know, kind of what they did to uh, Spencer Rattler last year is, yeah. you know, he's really good <clears throat> at dialing up schemes early, and now it's going to be a matter of making those adjustments as the season goes along. And, you know, fortunately, this year, hopefully, we won't have the major losses personnel-wise, which I think cer certainly affected last year's defense. But Klanerman certainly shown that he can, he can scheme it. I think that contributed to that interception and just – all day the overall confusion by the Stanford quarterbacks and not really getting a good read and not getting a good feel and never really getting comfortable throwing the ball all game long until it was 24 nothing. No doubt. And Russ, he sits in that, uh, that, that defense finds the perfect area. And, and you're right about that. It cannot be understated. Klanderman called it. I think <laughs> it really is evolving um, before our eyes, you know, last year he was up in the box didn't didn't um, he admitted that he didn't get as better of a feel. Sometimes he wasn't going with his gut, more analytical on the field. I think today they threw a bunch of looks at him on both sides of the ball. I think Messingham also did well, you know, in the first half. Um, but let's talk about – let's just go to the second half and talk about the third quarter where things kind of did stall out offensively. Um, and that's, that's nothing new for Messingham and this offense is third quarters have been something that hasn't been great. Does that concern you um, seeing game one, Nelly, to see uh, Messingham stall out in the third quarter once again? It, it's certainly now I think has become a trend. You know, it's, it's easy to say, well, it's a small sample size. It's just one game a season. That's very true, but that does date back to the last season. Even some the first year, they, they had some third quarters where they really struggled. So. Uh, I do believe that they have the talent and the personnel that it won't be a season-long issue. I do believe they will get corrected. They will put more focus on it. Um, you know, maybe some of those uh, plays or, or some of those things they would script typically for the first series or two of a game, maybe they'll hold some of those for, for the third series or for the start of the third quarter to help get themselves off to a better start. But certainly, yeah, that, that is an area they need to improve on. And the offensive line did play a big role in their struggles in the third quarter. That that by far was their worst quarter of the game. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy, uh, the defense was was lights out. Klanderman called a, a great game. Messingham, I think he called a really solid game as well um, for 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 what he was going against and and what he had at his disposal with a, with Skylar Thompson. You know, ha hasn't played a game in so so long. Um, but but I do want to ask you too. I mean. Uh, not a lot happened in that third quarter. It was kind of uneventful, um, but the defense has played well on both sides of the ball. Um, but are you concerned at all about Messingham and a third quarter trend of being stalled out after halftime? Yeah, yeah, it's it's tough because I've I've gone back and, and broke down every play of the third quarter offensively. Yep. You know, we had nine snaps for twenty three yards, and only one play was successful, according to down and distance in that in that span and. Uh, the thing is, I'll say this, 
we we ran different stuff than we ran in the first half. So it's not like he didn't try to make some adjustments. Um, we came out, we ran, tried to run a bubble screen to Deuce right away. Uh, and they kind of ate it up. Uh, we tried a different version of quarterback read off off of Jet um, that, that we hadn't run yet. Um, and then, as as Nelly pointed out, we we just got whooped a couple times yeah. up front, and and they got penetration on a couple plays where we had no act, no no chance. Um, both sacks were situations where Skyler had no chance. It was not his fault at all. There was no chance to get the ball away because he was got a guy in his face right away. And uh, we just – it's its a combination of – I don't know if part of it's maybe the scheme, but I think a lot of it is the mentality and trying to figure out what button to push to get the guys ready to go right after halftime. Cause we, mm-hmm. we certainly um, didn't stick with just the same stuff. We tried some new schemes. I think we tried to adjust, but we just didn't execute hardly anything well as, as we went into that second half. And, and you can't – you know, fortunately, the defense played great because, yeah. like I said at the beginning, that was where I was a little nervous is that, you know, Stanford got the ball, and I think one time was even moving the ball pretty decently in a position to make it a one-score game. And, uh, fortunately, we fought them off and got back going a little bit better in, at the early in the fourth quarter and then finished the game off after the last interception. Yep, and the defense really, you know, almost pitched a shot out probably might as well have uh, to Stanford didn't get a, a score until for, uh, about four minutes left in the game. So um, Nelly, what did you think of this defense? I, I think Daniel Green played really well. He stepped up and showed that he could be the answer um, <laughs> at that linebacker position, um, which, which is, which was one of those concerns going into the game. And I think he, he was really, really key. He, he and Cody Fletcher can't be understated how both were so key in making sure this defense um, kept Stanford at bay. Would you agree with that? Yeah, the, the most impressive thing to me was the number of hats they got around the football, both when Stanford ran the ball and when they threw it. You know, we gave up a high percentage. I think they were 23 of 30, but 30 yards after catch had to be pretty minimal. Um, it seemed like every time we were right there and multiple guys right there to make plays. I mean, the running game, they're – you know, there wasn't a lot of times that we got whipped up front, but the few times we did, instead of it being a eight-yard gain, it was a three- or four-yard gain just because we rallied to the football so quickly. Um, they tried to run outside zone stretch quite a few times, and every time we strung it out, and, and they couldn't get anything um, on those plays. So, yeah, overall, defense played really well. Um, you mentioned Fletcher and Green. You know, a couple of those sacks I, I would give credit to Fletcher and Green on because their quarterback was looking to dump the ball up on, on shallow crossers underneath, and Fletcher and Green did a great job of passing those routes off as they went through their zone and took them away and forced the quarterback to hold the ball longer. So, yeah, great effort overall. And then, uh, Fan, before we really dive into the fourth quarter, I do want to continue on the defense and talk about how impressive was that defensive line for K-State. Um, pushing back a, a offensive line that was supposed to be the strength for Stanford and really made them not look like one of the better offensive linemen in the country, especially for a group that was returning a lot of guys. Yeah, you you look at, you know, the, the plays we made with, you know, a bunch of tackles for loss in the game, a bunch of Havoc plays, Havoc rate of 25%. And anything over 20% for Havoc, Havoc rate is pretty impressive. Um, only They only had average about four yards per play for the game, which is really good. They only had a success rate for the game of just over 30%. So did a lot of good things. Only slight concern was 19% of their plays did gain 10 yards or more. They had eight, eight plays that gained 10 yards or more. But, you know, Nelly kind of pointed out none of them really hurt us badly. and you know, until the end, they didn't really even threaten to score. Yeah. Um, so, so overall, you just got to be in, like, like you mentioned, you know, Shaw tried to talk up his offensive line when he wasn't complaining about stuff <laughs> before the game. And they seemed to be complaining about stuff the whole game too, if you're watching on TV. Anyway, enough on Shaw complaining. But this, this offensive line he was trying to claim was going to be one of his best ever. At Stanford, we pretty much took the task, and, and that was an impressive showing. 
Absolutely. So then we get into the fourth quarter. K State gets a, a you know the one special teams. I think you know really positive thing that happened. Not a lot happened in special teams in this game for K State, but Tate Winkle got to try a forty yard field goal. He knocked that in, so that's a good good sign for a kid who's taken over for um, Blake Lynch, who's been the kicker for the last couple two three years. So. Um, if not four, I can't even remember. Blake Lynch has been here for a while, it feels like, at least. And I missed the little guy. But um, after that field goal, we have another interception. This is one where I, I do want to, you know, get some more in-depth analysis from you guys and, and on this drive and just tell me really what happened on that interception. How did T.J. Smith end up in such a good spot? Was it just a bad throw? Or was it Klanderman just setting it up correctly, T.J. Smith in the right spot? What happened there, Nelly, to make all those things work out for that that play? I would say it was a combination of both a bad throw and, and good defense. Um, you know, we did a decent job. The, the underneath coverage did a decent job of um, dropping back into their zone underneath the route, which which forced the quarterback to have to get it, uh, throw it into a tight window. Um, and he, he didn't. He, he did overthrow it. So, yeah, a good throw, and that's probably a completion, but it wasn't. But also it was, you know, the defense's um, positioning that, that forced it in forced it into being a tough throw. Jim, uh, and then Jimmy, after, after that interception, we, we go to a, uh, another touchdown for, you know, let's set up a two play 20 yard drive um, for Skylar Thompson to get back into the end zone on a 13 yard run after, you know, Deuce Vaughn set up with a seven yard run. Seemed like, I mean, obviously quick work of that drive and Skylar Thompson showing that um, he can run the ball a little bit still. Yeah, two two really good play calls. The first one um, was a inside zone off of the jet action um, with with Vaughn getting get a nice seven yard gain, well blocked, well executed play. Um, we just did, couldn't block the safety in that situation. He's kind of the one that forced the play, and then and then the, the zone read to finish it out, where we were we were running Vaughn more on a st uh, stretch action. Plus, it was a formation we hadn't run all game long. I um, it was. Before garbage time, it was the only formation where we didn't have a tight end on the field the entire game. It was that last touchdown run? We had two back gun with three wide receivers, twins to the top, I think single receiver to the bottom. Really nicely, nicely designed run, and uh, you know, I think it looked like usually on zone read you're reading a lineman, either defensive end or a tackle, usually a defensive end, but. It looked to me like on this one, uh, Skyler read the linebackers, and both linebackers shot because they were they were running uh, Vaughn to the twin side up top on the screen as you're watching it, mm -hmm. and both linebackers flew out of there, and there was really no one left to at the end. And then there was just an excellent block by Knowles to finish it. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't have scored. But Knowles, you know, Knowles was really. I know we maybe we talk about this later, but Knowles was really my player of the game on offense, just because he, every time he touched the ball, he made something happen, and then he was he was great blocking as well, and he, he finished out putting the game away twenty four nothing with an excellent block uh, to spring Skyler to the end. Nelly, I mean that's pretty much the end of the game after that. You know, Stanford gets a touchdown and stuff, and uh, you know, Daniel Green gets ejected. A few things we could talk about with that, but I I, I don't want to keep you guys forever. So I just want to ask the question to you, Nelly. Not everything went right for K-State in this game, but yet they still beat this Stanford team. Your overall thoughts on what this win means and really if you think it is, you know, if, if there's still more you need to see before you're bought in on this team or if this win makes you think, okay, this could be somewhat of a special season. Uh, overall, no doubt this is a good win. It's a really good win and certainly gives me hope and optimism. You know, if I were going to pick a few things that I would say uh, K-State will need to clean up or improve in order to turn it from a good season into a potential special season, um, you know, offensively on third down, while we didn't have a ton of chances, we also didn't make a ton of plays. You know, Skylar Thompson on third down was one of two for three yards. Um, he did convert the third down with his legs there in the third quarter. Um, but again, we, we did struggle some in the passing game on third down. We'll definitely have to make more plays um, on, on third down moving forward. 
Uh, defensively, you know, I'm anxious to see how we how we do against a better quarterback. And you know, Nevada will find that out quickly. Nevada quarterback will be way way better than Stanford's was. Um, you know, they they also missed on a couple potential touchdown plays down the seam that that he overthrew. So um, yeah, overall a really good performance, but a few couple things to, to improve on on both sides of the ball. And then Jimmy, last thing for you before we wrap this thing up, this is your time, your floor. Um, if we go over time on the Zoom, I'm just gonna call you back and we can, and you can finish it out. <laughs> but your time, your floor to just say anything else add on to what Nelly had to say and anything else from this game statistics wise that you want to throw in here before we wrap things up. And for me, the biggest thing was just, I think the, the unit that struggled the most was the offensive line. And I ex probably expected them to be a little more consistent in a step. I mean, it's hard because we averaged 8.3 yards per carry mm -hmm. in the game, not including sacks, but we had so many chunk plays and, and, you know, our running backs only average four yards of carry uh, on, on, uh, in the, the running back, uh, running back part of the run game. So to me, that's, that's something that we've got to get better at uh, a little more, a little stronger at. Um, but again, you know, you're, 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 those numbers look pretty good overall, but the sex, success rate of the, of the running back running game can be a little bit better. Um, and more consistent than just getting beat on some of the, the couple of those sacks. We just got whipped. Uh, we got whipped by Stanford's front. So that, that, that would be the biggest thing I want to see improve uh, consistently. See, but you know, when, when you get the chunk plays and the big plays against a, a power five conference team, you got to be pretty excited. Um, defensively, they'll probably have to settle in maybe into a little more rotation. And it'll be interesting to see how that kind of shakes out. Um, and as we, like, like Nelly said, how we're going to do against better quarterbacks as we see guys that are a little bit better decision makers. And, you know, even, even Southern Illinois quarterbacks experience probably is going to be a better decision maker than we saw from either Stanford's quarterbacks. So next week we're going to see one of the best wide receivers in, in FCS as well. So um, Southern Illinois won't be any slouch. Um, should be a team we beat, of course, but they've got playmakers on offense that, that will challenge us and we'll learn a little bit more, and then Nevada will really learn a lot. Um, so excited about the season. I think overall this was a better performance than I expected, especially on defense. I think the offense was solid, and, and it, it does get me excited for the season and, and make me think um, this team can be what, what a lot of us optimistic fans think it can be. Always appreciate the time from Nelly and Fan. Um, KSU underscore Fan on Twitter. That's Jimmy Goheen. Um, and, you know, the message board. And then Chris Nelson, KSO Nelson, I believe, on, on Twitter. Um, both amazing guys. Really always appreciate their time. The, the Zoom meeting had to duck out, so I'm in here by myself. But I did just want to come back in and thank them and say that we'll be, at, be back next week with another show. K-State keeps on winning. These will continue to be a lot of fun. So thank you for listening. I'm Grant Flanders. For Chris Nelson and Jimmy Goheen, tell your friends and keep on listening.